next servitor. This constitution shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges shall be bound thereby. Yeah. yeah. What an idea. Definition. To pervert. To turn away from the right course. To misapply. To lead into false judgment. We stand here today because of perversion. Perversion of meaning, perversion of intent, perversion of the Constitution, and perversion of our Republic meant to be dedicated to individual freedom and individual responsibility. specifically were the perversions at work in the Supreme Court Obamacare decision of June 28th. Perversion number one, the misuse of our Constitution, a document written to guarantee our individual freedom and ensure limited government, to permit that government to reach into the most personal areas of our lives at will. Perversion number two, the monstrous lie that the federal government in the persons of the nine justices of the Supreme Court is considered to be the only proper determinant of the extent of the powers granted to that government. This is nowhere in the Constitution. It was intended that each branch of government, including the sovereign states, be able to make that determination. Version number three, that of those nine, there exists a subset of oath breakers who have proven repeatedly that they have no understanding of and no respect for, nothing but contempt for, the founding principles of our constitutional republic. Perversion number four, of the meaning of words used in common parlance, of the acceptance of blatant lying, obfuscating evasions, and hypocritical double-speaking on the part of our so-called representatives and of politicians in general. Perversion number five, widespread denigration of our founding principles and the concomitant substitution of un-American and anti-American principles that subvert both our freedoms and our responsibilities as humans. Perversion number six, the endemic lack of understanding of those same founding principles by the populace which was planned, is purposeful, and was specifically designed to undermine those principles. The court ruled on only two points in the entire 2,700-page bill. It overturned the Medicaid expansion 7 to 2, yet it managed to uphold the individual mandate 5 to 4 by proclaiming it to be a tax. What the, by proclaiming to be a tax, what the law stated was a penalty. Despite the repeated statements by Congress and the executive branch that it was a penalty and not a tax. The majority decision on this second issue, as rendered, is a disingenuous, convoluted piece of anti-Constitution, anti-American nonsense. During the oral arguments, one justice took particular exception to and made a strong case against calling the penalty a tax. That was Justice Roberts. In a spectacular reversal, in the written decision, he specifically calls that same penalty a tax and bases the entire premise of the constitutionality of the bill on that tax. Yet, even if we stipulate his terminology to be correct, the bill is utterly unconstitutional. How so? If it is not in fact a tax, then the bill is unconstitutional for reasons that even the majority opinion notes. The federal government does not have the power to force people to buy insurance. 